And of course, Mad Magazine is it, it, one of the things that's fascinating for me about Mad is on the one hand, um, we have EC Comics. Uh, EC Comics in, in the 1950s uh, were doing all of the horror comics. Oh, that was good. <laughs> and we didn't know. even know we were going to use slides for sure until about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> um, th this stuff was EC Comics. And when a very nice man, a very well-intentioned man, um, a relatively well-intentioned man, <laughs> Uh, named Dr. A complicated Fre man. A complicated man named Dr. Frederick Wertham. I, I, we, we used to sort of, I, the slack that I used to cut Frederick Wertham, um, who wrote a book called The Seduction of the Innocent, which proved that comics were out to destroy you um, by fostering teenage delinquency and juvenile delinquency and, and destroying your children. Um, I used to cut him a little bit of slack, and then we discovered recently a, a researcher was going through Wortham's files and discovered that he actually faked a lot of his data, um, possibly all of his data. That, that he massaged it, they call it. He, he massaged it. <laughs> um, but what he did what that was interesting to me was he was the demon for me when I was growing up because he almost killed comic books. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he got a, a wide forum for this uh, notion that. Well, he, th I mean, there was book bur there was comics burning. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else and he's you got didn't in want there. Pictures. <laughs> <laughs> there was, uh, you know, the good housekeeping and things. People get together and they burn comics. Um, there were senatorial investigations. Bill Gaines who are uh, William Gaines, who, who actually published um, all of the EC comics, went down to testify before Congress. And uh, things did not go the way that he had planned. I no, think it, uh, it had a lot to do with diet pills. Uh, he was very awake and manic in the morning and wanted to tell off these uh, uh, senators, but they didn't call until the afternoon when he was crashing, so he was not in good shape when... <laughs> Um, they were trying to, uh, he was telling them that he was proud of what he was doing, uh, and then uh, they said, do you think what you do is in good taste? And he says, well, for a horror story, the things I do is, are in good taste. Uh, and then they said, well, what about this? What could be in worse taste? And he told them, didn't he? He sure did. He said that it should have, could have actually shown, you know, her severed windpipe and the, the neck and stuff, and he was actually And quite, that's when comic books were killed, with that sentence. He was very proud of himself because he had actually censored the comic by moving the image up. Right, the original one did have the did jugular have the severed showing. neck and the windpipe and stuff, so... See, but they, he saw this Wortham as uh, creating juvenile delinquents because he was treating uh, kids and he'd find out they read comic books and he made a causal connection. Um, well, it's now called the Wortham fallacy because they also drank milk, which might have created juvenile delinquency. And kids just read comic books in the fifties. It was a but, mass well, mass medium. But but now we've got um, EC Comics essentially get put out of business. But wait, before we leave that, like let's explain why he's complicated. Because what's interesting to me is okay, so he was, seemed to be the censorious creep, but then. As I found out more about him, I found out things that were really amazing. Like I read an essay by Ralph Ellison called Dr. Nickel. And what it is is that Wortham started the first black free psychiatric clinic, but he charged a nickel so everybody would be invested in their therapy. And he uh, became Ellison's therapist and um, uh, Richard Wright's therapist. And they uh, found him a wonderful man. And he did a number of other things that were astounding. Like he was a witness for uh, the defense in Brown versus Board of Education. Uh, he was the man who uh, made comics a public cause when he was uh, defending a nudist magazine mm -hmm. uh, from being pornographic. And he shows up and says, why are you so uptight? This is just the human body. If you want to see pornography, look at what I just bought down on the newsstand at the foot of the... Uh, court building, and then he was dealing out these things. Um, 
and that began a crusade. Now, do you, I do you, have, do you have that famous picture? He, he put, he illustrated his book, Seduction of the Innocent, oh, yeah. Dr. Frederick Bertham, with trying to prove that there was hidden porn. In, in ordinary comic books, there are pictures within pictures for children who know how to look. He is convinced. You know, I got that book, I got Seduction of the Innocent out of the library when I was about, uh, I don't know, 13, 12 years old. I never returned it because I was a juvenile delinquent from all the comics I had read. <laughs> and it also had, like in the back, a list of the co forbidden, of the comics that were the most pernicious. So I used to give those to my father as a want list because he was getting me uh, two or three comics for a dime from an old backdate magazine store and had no idea. So I had to train him, don't bring me the love comics, bring me the ones that look like uh, they have monsters on them, okay? And that wasn't, uh, he didn't know what he was doing, so it was fine. And for me, like, these things seemed to me in slightly later years as um, a secular Jewish response to Auschwitz in the post-war years of uh, the dead coming back to life for revenge or for horror taking place in an everyday environment like the subway here, you know? Um, but well, of course, Bernie, there was that Bernie Crickstein story, which was oh, one of the was, very few... Um, that was amazing. I wish I'd put that on my slide. It, it was one of the very few stories in comics to actually tackle the, yeah, in its own way. Yeah, the death camps were not part of popular culture like they are now where there's the best Holocaust movie as one of the awards every year at the Oscars. At the time, it just wasn't part of the conversation. And here in this uh, EC comic called Tales, designed to carry an impact, there was a story by a brilliant comic book artist, Bernie Krigstein, who uh, invented new ways of uh, breaking comics down uh, as a painter who applied himself to comics just to earn some kind of money. He found how exciting comics could be, and I wish I'd brought it, but you were right, we would never have pictures of everything we could talk about. Um, and it was such an amazing eye-opener for me. It planted the seed that eventually turned into that 13-year monster called Mouse, that comics could deal with this without uh, being um, mere melodrama.